Hey, this is Daniel from Adorama. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Cadence and Andreas, and we're gonna talk about shooting two people. So there's several different ways you can do this to create different effects. We're gonna start off with what I think is the most simple way, and also useful if you're shooting a generally a larger group than two. Basically, I've, you wanna keep them on the same plane of focus, right? So I don't want one person to be further back from the camera or closer than the other person. You wanna keep them lined up, more or less, and use a relatively large light source, but back it up. By backing your light source up, it's gonna make the distribution of light much more even, and then also it's gonna cut down on the, your shadows. And by using a large light source, it's gonna stay soft even when you back it up. So this is really great for just like, you could use it for a small catalog stuff, you could use it for portraits, it's really, really versatile. I often shoot actually children like this because they never stay in one spot, so it's good for that too. Um, so let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so for this setup, we decided to do something a little bit more dramatic. Where I've got the exact same five foot octagon, but we've added to the front of it uh, a grid. The main reason for that is because I wanted to keep the light off my background. Right now, I want to get a very dark background. Uh, it's in fact going completely black, right? And the other thing that I did was I staggered my two people, right? So they're one's closer to me than the other, and I had one step slightly closer to the light than the other, you know, as far as keeping it flat. Now, in order to compensate for that, I closed down my lens to f11 to give me enough depth of field. Obviously, you'll just do a little bit of experimentation and see how much focus you need. And then, if you notice, this light is at the same angle as the people are. This way, they're getting the same exposure across them. You can just eyeball it, and of course, ideally, you would use a light meter if you have one with you, just to make sure everything's balanced before you start. Okay, so for this last one, we actually started doing it one way, then switched it up a little bit. So what I, what I wanted to do was have a similar shot to what we just did, where they were both uh, lit uh, from the same direction, but with two different light sources, so I could balance it more, since he's wearing a black shirt and she's wearing a white shirt. But as we were playing around, we actually came up with this idea of creating a shot where Cadence is lit by this beauty dish in the front, and we wanted to make it feel like Andreas was being lit by the same dish, but of course, him being further away and wearing a black shirt, he was very underexposed. So what we did was, we took a second light source with the grid on it and we hid it behind the first one. Essentially creating a shot that looks like it's lit by the single light on Cadence, but it's actually lighting Cadence with one light, Andreas with the other one, and both of them are properly exposed. So let me show you how that looks. So when you're lighting multiple people, you know, think of it the same way that you do about lighting a single person, but remember that each one has their own specific qualities, whether they're wearing a light shirt or a dark shirt or their hair color or whatever, and you may have to adjust your lighting so that each of them is exposed properly in the same shot. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time on set.